my name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Whoa. So Project Par this week is taking a little detour, but a highly relevant one, because I read the autobiography of Agatha Christie. I have actually never read this book before, um, but I'm very glad to have, have gotten to it, and I will get into my thoughts. Um, I did want to mention that this was a buddy read, so big thank you to Dane at Dane Reads for giving me the motivation to go ahead and get to this. Um, it's a it's a good sized book and um, it's one that I think because of its size I'd sort of been putting off but when you have somebody to read it with it can make it a lot more fun. So thank you for spurring me on to get to this. Um, I really enjoyed it and we were kind of saying in our, our little chat that um, we were probably the only two booktubers who were interested in reading this so like it's good we found each other. Um, so anyway I will link Dane's channel below and all of his information. You should definitely go check him out. He's great. Um, he's very omnivoracious. He reads pretty much everything except not that much romance though you know what I'll get to him someday and, and force him to, to give it a good try. So anyway, <laughs> I want to get into some of my thoughts about this. So let's do that. So like there's no need to plot summarize because this is an autobiography, not a, uh, a narrative story. Things that I want to say about this. Overall, I would say that this is one of my favorite autobiographies or memoirs that I've ever read in terms of just like the delightfulness of the voice in this was just, it was such a wonderful read. Um, my plan to read this kind of got abbreviated because one of my best friends had a baby right in the middle of when I was planning to read this. So I actually ended up doing a catch up one day on my parents' couch and I read like 400 pages of this. And I just really enjoyed being immersed in her voice for so long. Um, and I think one of the things that I take away from this book is that you know, when I think about why I love her books, of course I think about things like, oh, well, I love Poirot. Like I think about some of the memorable characters that I've really enjoyed from her. I think about some of the ingenious plots that I was like, shit, that like completely surprised me or like delighted me or whatever. Um, those, those tend to be some of the things I think of as well as like atmosphere and tone. Um, I think it's not that I discount her writing, but I think what this book made me really appreciate is how much of what I love about her is her writing and it's how you know I love the characters because she effectively communicates them to me I love the plots because she has a good sleight of hand in terms of how she's describing things and the atmosphere in particular I realize how much that of that goes into her writing style because I think what's really cool about this is if you like sort of the tone or atmosphere of Agatha Christie I would definitely recommend at least giving this a try because she you can tell that that just comes from her own life like there are many things like scenes and stuff that she would describe in here that felt like it belonged in one of her works of fiction because she just had the same kind of like really warm way of describing things like really um, evocative of the time period way of describing things so I think that's like one of my biggest takeaways from this is just that like I love the hell out of her writing style and I think I don't always give her enough credit for what a stylist she really is because I think um, by writing about something that is not fiction the uniqueness of her style kind of was like highlighted to me. I also absolutely adored this as sort of like a primary text document in terms of like social history because oh my gosh guys so um sidebar is that uh, when I was in grad school one of the classes that I like helped teach was on the development of sexuality and gender roles um, particularly as it pertained to like the various Christian movements in the UK and, and in America so um, one of the things that the professor in that class would do or like one of her ways of teaching was to always set something called a gobbit and that was like from a primary text and there's this specific form of essay and I was just reading this the whole time being like I would make that a gobbit I would make that a gobbit like this would be so fascinating to watch people unpack because like this is just such a reflection of the time and I think the part of this book that I enjoyed the most was actually her um, childhood like her talking about up through like basically her courtship and her first marriage was far and away my what interested me the most in this book um, because she talked the way she would talk about like her parents marriage for instance was fascinating to me like basically all the gender stuff in this book was fascinating to me as like an artifact of history and how she would describe like various like courtship rituals and like what was expected of girls and because she's living through such a transformational time and this is like this is the entire reason why I'm doing Project Poirot the way I'm doing it right like kind of through the lens of social history and like moral development and, and evolving ideas of what is good and bad um, 
the reason I chose to do that was because she did live in such like a, a crazy um, changing world. Like she was born, I believe in 1890 and died in 1976. So like think about how much the world changed on a you know geopolitical scale, sure, but also like the huge revolution in in things like marriage and gender roles and how you know the and foreigners and how um, you know non-white people are perceived and just like in every social dynamic, there's so much change. And because she's living through such change and because she's like a thoughtful person, she actually like comments on that at several points, like very directly of like, well, when I was a girl this is how things were done or this was in fashion or that was never allowed or whatever. So like, I just, that was honestly probably the thing that I most enjoyed in this book aside from like the writing and the tone, like I was saying, I just loved her own self-awareness as like a primary text of um, somebody who had witnessed a tremendous amount of change in, in her world. Now granted that's coming from a very specific point of view, like an upper middle class perspective and and oh my lord does she have some blind spots like no doubt about that but um i think just like listening to this as like a witness of history that was probably the thing that like i most enjoyed in this book let me see if i can pick because like i i flagged so many little things that i could read to you guys so let me pick one to read to you just as like an example of um kind of her like witnessing of history. Okay, so here's like a great one about gender. Like again, I just wish that I could make students write me an essay about this because I think there's just so much here to unpack. And also I think gets into some of um, the style of this book. So she says, in one respect, a man was paramount. He was the head of the house. A woman, when she married, accepted as her destiny, his place in the world and his way of life. That seems to me sound sense and the foundation of happiness. If you can't face your man's way of life, don't take that job. In other words, don't marry that man. Hearsay is a wholesale draper. He is a Roman Catholic. He prefers to live in a suburb. He plays golf and he likes to go for holidays to the seaside. That is what you are marrying. Make up your mind to it and like it. It won't be so difficult. So like, I just think that's a fascinating window into sort of like her perspective on gender um, and just like how roles have changed. And the fact that she's describing being a wife as a job I think is super interesting. Yeah, and then another thing I wanted to read was an observation she made about anti-Semitism, like in the lead up to World War II, like just as a, you know, a moment of insight into kind of some of the geopolitical changes that are happening. One last thing I remember, which was like a portent of things to come. We had been having tea in Dr. Jordan's house in Baghdad. This is when she's on um, an archeological dig with her, her second husband, Max. He was a good pianist and was sitting that day playing us Beethoven. He had a fine head, I thought, and looking at him, what a splendid man he was. He had seemed always gentle and considerate. Then there was a mention by someone, quite casually, of Jews. His face changed, changed in an extraordinary way that I had never noticed on anyone's face before. He said, you do not understand. Our Jews are perhaps different from yours. They are a danger. They should be exterminated. Nothing else will really do but that. I stared at him unbelievingly. He meant it. It was the first time I had come across any hint of what was to come later from Germany. People who had traveled there were, I suppose, already realizing it at that time. But for ordinary people in 1932 and 1933, there was a complete lack of foreknowledge. On that day, as we sat in Dr. Jordan's sitting room and he played the piano, I saw my first Nazi. And I discovered later that his wife was an even fiercer Nazi than he was. They had a duty to perform there, not only to be a director of antiquities or even work for their country, but to also spy on their own German an ambassador. There are things in life that make one truly sad when one can make oneself believe them. So, you know, that's an, an interesting kind of firsthand observation about um, a very low level Nazi at that point, but like what was kind of fomenting in Germany that you could observe if you if you encounter them in the wild. So yeah, so I love this as a piece of social history and like I could, I, I marked probably like 30 things to read and I, I'm not gonna do that to you guys, but I just, I really enjoyed this book. Um, and I will say that I think I kind of left this feeling a little sad. I think as somebody who love, loves Agatha Christie, I don't know that I ever fully really um, knew kind of the timeline of her life as well as I feel like I kind of have a better sense of that now. But there's a real tragedy and kind of sense of sadness, I think, in this book because, as I kind of alluded to earlier, I think she really sees her, like, she sees being a wife as a job. And, and Dane and I were talking about this, that she always kind of thought of herself first as a housewife and then as a novelist. 
There's very little actually in this book about her writing, which I think can probably be for the best because sometimes when writers try to write about writing, it can get a little tedious. And so you don't get that in here. There's only like brief, like very few relative to the fact that this is like almost a 600 page book, allusions to her actual writing. And um, I think that's because she saw herself as a wife and her first marriage just made me so sad because I knew that her husband had left her and that kind of like was a piece of how she like disappeared, which by the way, she doesn't even talk about in this and we could get into the whole like reliable narrator bit here because I have some thoughts about that. But anyway, I'm not even gonna go there. Um, but she she talks about her first marriage and essentially you can tell that they were a couple that was like very passionately in love and, and it was a match very much of like emotions and feelings. But he tells her from the jump, like, I'm not good in bad times. Like I'm a, he basically says like, I'm somebody who cannot bear to be unhappy. And so like, I'm only gonna be good at this so long as I'm happy. And basically her mother, who she was very, very close with, she was the youngest of three and like her mother was I think well into middle age when she had her. Um, so they were very very, very close she was sort of the baby her mother passed away and she fell into basically what you can kind of see as a depression after that and because she wasn't being attentive enough to him he fell in love with someone else and like just what a douchebag he is about the whole thing and like the way she writes about it it just was so sad and from that point on I just felt like she never was really happy again. And maybe that's me just projecting, but like she kind of talks about like how she kind of sees divorce as a shame and like she had a very hard time like giving the divorce cause she felt so much shame about it. And I really just feel like that kind of undercuts a lot of the rest of the story, especially because even though she puts on a very rosy face about her second marriage to Max, I know that he was cheating on her. Like that's kind of known that, she, that he was having, like I think he had a couple of long-term mistresses and she knew about it and she wasn't happy about it. And considering, I think what made me sad about about it is that she is literally like the greatest popular fiction writer of the 20th century in my opinion at least in the english language like who who is a better popular fiction writer than her in this time period or more successful or however you want to measure it like she's just she's she's somebody whose name will last the test of time like she is to me she i guess the parallel i would want to draw is to someone like dickens like i think that she will have an, a similar legacy as he does in terms of just like somebody who was writing books that people loved to read in their time and that were good enough that they have endured past then. And the fact that I think she did see herself primarily as a housewife and therefore because of these relationship dynamics, I feel like she kind of saw her life as somewhat a failure in some levels. Um, maybe I'm projecting that too much, but that, that seemed to me to be some of the undercurrent of, of the way she was talking about certain things. And it made me feel really sad, especially in the epilogue, like I cried in the epilogue when she was sort of talking about like, my life is coming to an end. Like she stopped writing this in 1960 when she was like 70. Little did she know she was gonna live another 16 years. But um, she's talking, you know, and she says like, God has given me a good life and I'm thankful for it. But I also just think that there's kind of an undercurrent of sadness in this book that like made me sad and made me be like, Agatha, I wish you were like more proud of yourself than you seem to be in this book because like, my God, what an accomplishment. So anyway, it did make me a little bit sad, but, um, I think that she did have an amazing life and it was cool to read about all the places she traveled to and just sort of like the glamor of her life. And um, yeah, I just really enjoyed living day-to-day -day life with her through her eyes in this book. So all that to say, I really did enjoy this. I gave this a four out of five on Goodreads, um, which is a five out of seven on my scale. And I just, yeah, it's just a really great book. If you have any interest in Agatha Christie, I would recommend this. I know this isn't for everyone, but um, if you're also someone who just really loves a well-written memoir or a well-written autobiography, I think you could do a lot worse than this one. Like this is really good. So if that's a genre you enjoy, I'd recommend it for you in that case as well. But yeah, just really enjoyed this. And I feel like I have a much better sense of um, her as a person and her as sort of like a person in history after having read this. So yeah, that will do it for this week's episode of Project Poirot. Next week, we will be back to an actual Poirot novel with Cat Among the Pigeons. Um, thanks again to Dane for buddy reading with me. I enjoyed it. And uh, like I said, I'll put his info below so you can go check his channel out. And I think besides that, that will do it. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social means if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. Um, and you know, I rated this on Goodreads. If you're ever wondering what I'm reading or how I'm thinking about what I'm reading, definitely feel free to friend me on there. Um, I keep that pretty up to date. So anyway, you can you would have already seen some of my thoughts or seen my rating at least if you were, if you were following me on there. So, um, but yeah, I think that will do it. I hope you're having a great day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.